what okay. we have now is the following things. So we have a, a class that's called default API. We'll show you shortly how we can um, see that, uh, but I will first show you how to use it. Um, mm -hmm. Here you see um, Visual Studio already um, uh, tells us that we can using the IO Swagger API. And by doing that, we see that it's already an, a known class. And we see here we're using now this, this API uh, information. So for, for more details about this API or what Swagger has mm -hmm. created for us, we just open here the API. And here we have this default API. It can be renamed by you. So it's just the default name. And here you see all the, um, the auto-generated code that was done for you already. There are so many stuff we could get into, uh, but uh, for this tutorial, I want, don't want um, to go into every uh, part, but... No, uh, we'll, we'll address these as we go along in, in future tutorials. We'll, we'll have yeah. use cases, and for each use case, the respective class functionality we'll talk about then. Absolutely true. But what uh, we have here is already a, a great tool set where we already have, for example, the possibility to filter products using a post parameter and this, this all async. Asynchronous, so, yes. Yeah, we have all the, the, the call, uh, the, the endpoint. The big um, takeaway here for anybody watching this is that by simply following the steps that Paul's outlined here, what you have is a working API wrapper. Yes, and that enables you to start building uh, on your ideas immediately without having to uh, write the necessary code in order to use the API. That's right. So, do you remember this this call we just saw on the website? It's called product uh, name candle scat. So here you see an implementation in C sharp where we later will use only the product name, the from and to date, and the resolution and we will get the, the candle chart um, data. By going into this um, class, we will see, mm -hmm. oh, we hear already um, the one min, min, minutes. Um, five minutes, 15, Five 30, minutes and so, so on. on, yeah. This so is so convenient. This, this is yeah, so, so convenient. Saves so much time in the, in the, um, in the development. development life cycle, yes. Yeah, so as we know now, we have a powerful API when we can just use it. And I will just uh, start now um, by creating an API client. For example, I would call an API client. Just go here and say var, and I uh, will just write some code and explain you later what I've done. So, First of all, I just create a new instance of this API client just using my, my URL I just have on my, um, my um, GUI. Uh, the default API gives us access to the entire space of five APIs. That's right. Yeah. And now I want to, to use this API, but before we can use it, as you know, you have to, to put our own um, access token here. So mm -hmm. doing that, we need to add a default header that header um, needs our authentication key. By the, this is done by the following code. I would just copy it, not writing everything because it's too much time consuming. So <laughs> what I've done here is just authorization. It's uh, the default header we need to set is authorization. And we need our bureau access token. This is done by mm -hmm. this simple step. And now we are ready to go. So we can now call every single um, API endpoint. API, yes, API endpoint. So let's start with a, with a simple one by getting all the products. API client dot product get. We could even do this async, but in that case, I would just make it easy and mm -hmm. uh, get the information. Products get um, needs for, um, from us the status that we see it here, the status the page we want and how many per, how many we need we per page yes so we will only want to get the active um, data we want to get page zero zero is the first page and the default parameter is like 50 let's do that that way just um, write this data into darwin's and just 
put it in a, in a container. By doing a simple um, debug, we will see which data we get now, and we can just see what uh, would be done here. Mm -hmm. By going one step further, we already loaded all the data, and we see here we have already this content, 50 data, and we can see already every information about the first 50 um, entries in this. Um, yeah. Gosh, there's a reason I love Visual Studio. <laughs> like, I get so much heat from some of my hardcore developer buddies who use <laughs> VIM. And I use VIM too, <laughs> the, the, the editor. And then it's like, oh, you failed us. You use IDEs. <laughs> this is beneath our standards. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, it kind of makes your life a bit easier. So you should try it. <laughs> I fully understand you. And by doing that, I mean, that's just one possibility. We could just could use here, for example, our watch um, and just say, let's put not the second page. So let's put this uh, into that and we just can see that we have now the next 50 just by doing it in a uh, in a simple way to have a watch here and a and a button so what i've done was to, to de uh, debug the code but it's not necessary to do everything here in this in a runtime and importantly the swagger client the api client that's been created this also ensures that that client is functioning correctly so yes so as you can see, if we know what we're doing, it's like not even five minutes to, to create a project like that and uh, creating the Swagger I.O. Uh, library and consuming data from the, uh, from the API. So it's a really powerful, easy way. And the um, great news for anybody watching this is that all of this that you've watched being developed will be open sourced. So yes. you can literally download and start from where you leave off in any particular tutorial. Yes, that's right. Saves you a lot so, of time. 